What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, previews and vlogs. Glad to have you guys back. All right, today we're doing a couple of things here. Some of them include the Cadillac and some of them include the Trailblazer. Uh, this video pretty much, it's mainly the throttle body cleaning I'm gonna do on that Trailblazer and I'm gonna install the K&N filter. I did order a bunch of stuff for the Trailblazer. I got the front brakes here that I'm gonna be doing. That'll be another video, of course. I'm gonna be installing the K&N filter, which is right here. I got all the LED lights and the seat trim that is broken on my side here. Now I'm still waiting on the front grill that's supposed to be coming. So that's all this stuff is gonna be a series of videos that I'm gonna be upgrading the Trailblazer and getting all the maintenance done on the Blazer as well as doing some little bit of upgrades here. Nothing too crazy that I'm gonna be doing. I'm not gonna be doing a lift on it or anything like that. So things here and there that we'll be, I be, will be putting onto the Trailblazer. But before I do anything today, I will be actually taking the wheels to Livati and I'm gonna have them. Now, these wheels here are for the Cadillac, by the way, I forgot to mention that. I did get wheels. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you notice that I posted pictures of wheels on there. So I got some wheels for it. Nobody's really seen the wheels. I've barely seen the wheels. Like I said, I'm trying to keep them for myself as well, but I'm gonna be taking these wheels to Livati. He's gonna go ahead and ceramic coat the wheels inside and out before I mount them on the car, which that'll be coming in a later video. Again, the Cadillac, there's not much videos that's been done on this. I'm waiting to get that recall done before I do anything to this car. And then we'll be go ahead and just basically go nuts on the on the Cadillac. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and clear out the garage. I gotta back out the Trailblazer. We're gonna be putting the wheels in the back of the Trailblazer, so we could take them to Livadi. And then on the way back, when I come back later, I'm gonna do the throttle cleaning and installation of the K&N filter. This video is more on the K&N filter because I put it on the wife's Pathfinder. And after I installed it, the car, the way when you when you accelerate the car, it sounds a lot meaner. You could hear that air getting sucked in through the regular intake. It doesn't have a turbo or anything like that, just like that one does. And I do know that they sell a intake system for that car, but I'm not going to go ahead and buy that. I'm not trying to do go all crazy on that one. That it's just like my daily. But I did want to get a little bit better filter. And I'm going to see if the comparison between the regular air filter it has on there right now and the Canon filter make a difference like it did with the Pathfinder. So let's go ahead, mount the wheels on the back of the Trailblazer and go out to the body, drop them off, and then we'll be back and get them, and get the um, throttle body cleaned out. So let's put the wheels in the back of that blazer. All right, so wheels are in the back of the car. Let's go ahead and get out to Livadi and have them drop these wheels off for him. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, fellas, very next day now. So today we're going to be dropping off, or actually, all right, fellas, so, the next day, actually, I wasn't able to come back and do that throttle cleaning like I wanted to uh, that same day that I dropped off the wheels, so I had to wait till the next day. We came home late. It was night outside. We were hungry. We went out to eat. I actually got something to eat, and then that was pretty much most of the day right there. So today, what we're going to be doing again, we're going to be doing the throttle cleaning and replacing the engine air filter with a K&N filter. Now, today, for a reason, it's cold. It's 33 degrees outside. There is flurries outside it looks like it's gonna snow it's it's a crappy day today but i got the car or the truck here in the garage closed out and i got the fan blowing up there so i got some heat coming in and we're gonna go ahead and take the throttle out of this car now this throttle cleaning i'm doing as preventive maintenance now of course if you're having any issues with any check engine lights coming on i suggest you take it to your local mechanic dealer and get the car properly diagnosed now some issues can be caused by a 30 throttle body. Now again, for the 15th time, I don't, this is not a do it yourself video. This is not a walkthrough. If you guys wanna see me how I do it, I'm just basically more of a vlog and how, what I'm doing with my truck and my cars. Now, if you guys wanna take this as, you know, a tutorial video, that's fine. But again, I suggest if you guys don't know what you're doing, because some of these trucks or some of these cars require an idle relearn. I know that for a fact, if you do it on a Nissan or any type of Nissan or Infiniti, those things you have to take it to a dealer to have an auto reeler. And if not, you got high idle, you'll have check engine lights coming on, things like that. Now, I've done it on, the last time I did a throttle body cleaning, I actually did it on the 2014 CTS. No, actually, I'm lying. It was the Acura. I did it on the 03 Acura, took the throttle out, cleaned it, was perfectly fine. Didn't have to do an idle reeler. Same thing with the, the CTS. I actually replaced the throttle body on that one 
and that one was fine as well. It does its own idle relearn. The Trailblazer 2008, 2006, all those models, you could do idle relearns, there's procedures, you could disconnect the battery, there's also fuses you could take for the uh, PCM that you could pull out for it to do its own relearn. Of course, I have read up on it, and there are other issues you could have. Of course, you could still have that issue, and most of these trucks will learn or idle will learn to idle themselves but again if you don't know what you're doing i'm taking i'm doing this all this stuff on my own wrist so again if you guys want to follow this video and i will explain what i'm doing but again it's not a how-to video it's just basically me vlogging and what i'm doing to my car so anyways enough talking let's go ahead and get this throttle out and i'm again i'm gonna explain exactly what i'm going to be doing and what i'm gonna be using or what i'm gonna be taking off take that however you guys want to take it so i'm gonna go ahead and take this throttle body out of here and get it cleaned out all right, so the only things you need for this job are pretty quick, a 3 8 ratchet with an extension and a 10 millimeter socket and an 8 millimeter socket. And of course, make sure you guys use throttle body cleaning. Don't use any other type of cleaner because you will probably mess it up or cause some kind of issue. All right, so here's what we're going to need. You're going to basically remove, just like we did when we did these spark plugs on this thing, 8 millimeter socket or a regular flathead screwdriver to remove this to get this snorkel out of there and we're gonna need another eight millimeter to remove that two tens to remove this one here and there is one right back here and of course you got to make sure you disconnect this for the wiring harness so this resonator comes out once that comes out the only thing holding this throttle body in is four 10 millimeter bolts and of course this fuel line here and a connector that we got to unplug from there so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the whole thing and I'm gonna come back and show you guys how the throttle body looks once I remove everything. So one quick thing I did notice, a lot of the videos you guys will see out there, the connector is actually up front here. For some reason on mine, the connector for the throttle body is all the way in the back. So unlike most of the videos you guys have seen for those trailblazers out there, of course I got the fuel line undone. All this, this is just a small clip here. Um, comes up very easily actually. Just pull down the clip and pull out. But this connector back here most of them are on the front of here where you just unplug it this way and on this one the connector is all the way in the back so we're gonna have to do undo this connector to get to this to remove this four bolts out of here all right, so <laughs> had to remove plugs number um I can't even think right here three and four out of the way because they were getting in the way of me getting to these two bolts here to get the throttle body out but there is the throttle bodies out so my only fear is right now since i have seen of course a lot of um the ones i've seen with the connector being in the front my biggest fear is that this is going to need a factory idle relearn and i'm going to have to drive this thing into the dealership and pay them their 100 and whatever dollars they're going to charge to get that done but i'm hoping that it could be done here now i did take it off even though most of the other ones have the connector in the front i don't think it should be any difference but we'll see once we get it back going but let's take a look at this throttle this thing looks like it has never ever been cleaned look at that it's all gunked up so we're gonna go ahead and take this we're gonna go outside and clean this we're not gonna do it inside here because we don't want to die of course and uh, get all those fumes inside of our lungs here so always do this with the cleaning outside in an open environment where it's it's clean uh, it's actually fresh air is it available or not something like that because you don't want to use those sprays in a closed environment so i'm gonna take this outside and get it cleaned out well so much for going outside and doing it set it to snow all of a sudden but either way i got it all set up here i'm gonna use of course again throttle body cleaning wife's toothbrush didn't tell her i took it uh, to get that around kind of the crevices in there uh and there's use a pan of course for everything to fall into here and then we're going to use some um, shop towels to get it all cleaned out so this shouldn't take very long i mean some of this stuff might be gunked up there for you know from just years of being in there but let's get this thing cleaned out now the reason you want to clean this out if you guys didn't know is because as the throttle body of course gets dirty the plate it's the throttle plate itself which is this thing in here it's supposed to be at a certain angle that the car knows and of course as it gets dirty it'll get stuck at certain other points as the throttle won't close fully or however it is and of course it'll 
If it gets stuck somewhere, then you have you may have a check engine light come on because of this. Also, some people have experienced rough idle or anything like that. Again, my truck doesn't have any of that. Thank God. According, I mean, looking at this thing, I'm surprised it doesn't have any of that. But we're still gonna clean it out, so I don't have any issues in the future with it. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned out here, and then I'm gonna show you the end results. All right, so now that that's done, the little shot of the actual throttle and how it looks now, all clean. I'll give you a shot of before and after. But again, so I did take a scotch pad. You can use a little scotch pad here also to clean it. This is not a race of this actually is, won't even cause any damage to that. If you get parts that are kind of stuck on there and won't come out, so just make sure you use one of these. Nothing too abrasive. Again, just a toothbrush. I'm gonna put this back in my wife's uh, toothbrush holder. Maybe she will notice. And of course, the screwdriver I use to kind of prop in the throttle uh, plate. Make sure you don't, while you're propping that open, you don't let the thing slam close. Just could cause damage to the throttle uh, body itself. All right, so now that that is all cleaned out and ready to go, pretty much all of it out. I also cleaned the outside around where the mounting goes on there let's go ahead and reinstall this and pretty much reinstallation is the reverse of taking it out so I'll go ahead and install this back on there start these back. do not use a power tool or anything like that please just and start them even all the way down this is a loop this is plastic this is aluminum you could damage something uh, also there was there is a gasket in here um, it's reusable from what I know it when it came when this came the throttle came out No pieces of the gasket were stuck to the throttle. So this should be reusable shouldn't have an issue It looks like it was all intact in there So if you want you go ahead and go and buy one replace it if you want while you're doing this If not just reuse that it should be a reusable gasket. So I'm hand starting all these Before I put the wrench to it and then We'll get everything plugged back up there and then let's see and then we'll show you guys what we have to pull out of the fuse box to get the idle relearn on this. So now that's all back together. Make sure you guys make sure put all your connection back together. Make sure everything's on properly. The connector in the back. Same thing if you do remove the spark plugs or the coil packs on there, like I did to get access to those bolts. Make sure you put that back together. All your connections are close together as well. Now I'm not doing the Canon just yet. I want to make sure that this car, I don't have to do an idle relearn. Uh, there's a few ways that people say you can do it. You can disconnect the battery is one way. You can pull fuse 10 and 28 out, which are your ECM on board, and basically that'll reset everything. Now there is another way, of course, that you could do this. You could actually do it with a idle relearn with the actual turning the car on. What you would do is start the car on for three minutes, let it run, shut it off for 60 seconds, start it up for three minutes again, and it should be okay after that. If not, we will have to do a either disconnect the battery or take out the fuses, or I'm gonna have to use my, I got a little bit OBD2 scanner that I plug into the scanner and reset all the code to reset everything back to zero from that. So let's see how the car starts up first with this back on there, see if it, I even have to do it. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes the look of the draw, I've seen people that where they just start it up and you don't even have to do the relearn, it does it automatically. So it should start up. Uh, let's go ahead and see. Started right up. Idle is down a thousand. Not, of course. No funny idle or anything like that. So that's a good thing. I mean, I, again, I did not have a check engine light on at all. So that's actually a good thing right now. Also, another thing I'll let you guys know is you hear how the car is running now? I had that squealing noise after I put the belt on and I thought it was a tensioner and I did replace the tensioner. There is a new tensioner in there. And I still had that squealing noise coming from the engine. And I was about to replace the power steering pump pulley or even the power steering pump. But I had a exhaust smell coming in my car from the vents. So I took it into a muffler shop. I said, hey, look at the muffler. I think I might have a hole somewhere. It might be a leak somewhere. And they did, they found the flex pipe had a hole in it and there was a 
actual gasket that goes from the manifold to the actual catalytic converter right between there that was completely rotted out and it was just dangling and shaking in there and they replaced all that the truck runs a hundred times quieter the squeaking is gone even when you accelerate the squeaking is gone and it was literally an exhaust leak pretty much an exhaust gasket that was the cause of it was the belt was bad when i did the other video i'll put a link on that for if you guys want to look at that video the belt was bad because i sprayed it down with water and the squeaking went away after i replaced the belt it got a lot quieter but it still had a small squeaking but that's what it was it was an actual um just a a gasket and a, a some of a, a flex pipe but either way back to the car let's see any lights on so we got the driver door open airbag light is the only light I have on I've always had that light on actually after they detail it I had it on so we'll figure that out at some point but the car's running smooth RPMs are back down to uh, I would say about seven six hundred seven fifty or so as the car is getting warmed up here we're gonna go ahead and drive let me see let's put this thing in drive see if it changes at all nothing really All right, let's go drive this thing and see what happens. And then we'll come back. We'll listen to how it rides with the factory air filter on it. And then we'll come back and install the K&N filter and see how, if it does make a difference in how the engine sounds. I, again, I know it does suck in more air. Supposedly gives you a little bit more horsepower. Exactly, I don't know how much. And, but again, on the wife's Pathfinder, that thing just, when you hit the gas, it just sounds like it's a lot meaner. Uh, so let's see if it actually changes the, the engine noise or engine sound for this car. So let me go ahead and get everything cleaned up behind the truck and I'm going to get back in the car and we'll go for a ride. All right, so I've been now driving for a good five, six minutes. Car's driving fine. No check engine light, which is a good thing. RPMs are staying where they're supposed to be when I'm at idle. Car feels, again, I did put spark plugs on the car. And uh, of course, again, with the exhaust change, like I said earlier, this car is a lot quieter no squeaking not even heat because you can't even hear the exhaust the engine barely running so i'm surprised that i found this car for as low as price as i did and just a few things that i had to do to it i'm still having done the brakes and a couple other things that we'll be doing and showing you guys but as far as i'm concerned this car should give me if i'm not surprised another hundred thousand miles as long as i take care of it i did try to replace the transmission fluid on the car and when i did check the uh, i went to check the fluid level the transmission fluid was actually pretty clean and full to where it's supposed to be at so whoever had this car last did some work to this car they were taking care of this truck here um oh, there goes my garage door all right so again car's running great no check engine lights everything looks good accelerates right away no issues with the acceleration issues with the stopping of course because I had need front brakes really bad but again they're waiting in the garage to get installed but overall I mean that was a pretty easy job because make sure again again some trucks are different some of these trailblazers are different when it comes to actually cleaning the throttle some of you may have to do an idle reeler I didn't have to do any of that I started the truck up she started right up no issues Hit the gas, responds right away. So, everything is good with it. Let's go back to the garage and install that K&N filter. Now, I want you guys to pay attention and listen how the truck sounds right now. So it's quiet it's 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 you know it's not very loud of course it's just sucking in its regular air let's go ahead and put a K&N filter on there and see oh look at that an accurate TO just like mine for sale <laughs> but let's go ahead back to the garage install that K&N filter and see if it changes anything when it comes to 
the noise level of the engine maybe makes it sound a little bit meaner even though I don't have an exhaust or anything really done to the truck let's go ahead and get the K&N filter installed now this install should be pretty easy the few screws to get this cover off of here there is one all the way down there there's one right here and I believe there is one right there then this the whole thing comes off filters in there it is like a cylinder type of filter which looks like actually like an intake almost so we'll go ahead and take this off real quick just some Phillips screws out of there and we'll get the new K&N filter installed right out just like that and let's get the K&N filter installed in here always make sure you just clean this stuff I just like cleaning this right here this is actually your washer fluid tank but I do like just cleaning this whole area here because the filter is sucking air through here and it might just get some of that dirt so we want to get the new filter to make sure that it's got a nice clean mounting place there so let's get that cleaned up here all right so here's the new K&N filter it's about the same size the, this one does come with an actual clamp which is pretty cool that the other one didn't have one but it does also have this small lip right here actually let's get it out of the bag get a better look at it much the same size and height this has this lip which this one does not this one just kind of goes over that the actual snorkel here this one is going to clamp down on it which is actually a little bit tighter fit a little bit better fit so let's go ahead and get that canine filter installed here again just slide it in there tighten this up and put all the screws back in there should be good to go and then we'll turn this on and see how it sounds I need to use this clamp and as soon as I put this on here the filter actually was very very loose on there so you definitely need to use this clamp clamp it down just hand tighten it don't overdo it should be nice and snug in there and be ready to go so let's go ahead and put everything back together again we already went on a ride so throttle body k and filter done today throttle body cleaning i should say and a k and filter done today let's start her up and see how she sounds with this k and filter and of course we will go for a ride and see how it sounds when you're giving it some gas <clears throat> All right, not much of a difference in the end. A little bit more air. Maybe, maybe not. All right, let's close the hood and go for a ride. All right, guys, so let's give it some gas here. I got a nice clear roadway here. Okay, yeah. I can definitely hear the difference. I, I, I don't know if you guys can pick it up in the actual, on the audio from the camera here, but I hear the difference. I can hear the difference. I can hear the car sucking in a little bit more air. It does sound a little bit meaner. It does change the tone of the engine a little bit so I mean you feel the pickup also a little bit more just like before than the regular air filter so I mean again you guys know K and then their filters are really good for basically giving the engine a, a better uh, breathability if you, if you want to say it uh, getting more air into the engine they sell cold air intakes for this truck if you want again I'm not to that point now if I decide to keep the truck and spend some more money on it on upgrades I might do a intake I might throw in you know some headers and a exhaust system if I decide to keep the truck and keep doing things to it for now my major project is the CTSV sport that's sitting around I just you know I noticed that the community for trailblazers was pretty big and a lot of people have them 230 300,000 miles on the trucks and they're loving them uh, there are people of course like every other car that hates them but that's on every car I mean you have your your pros and your cons but anyways Canon air filter installed, throttle body cleaning. So I'll see you guys next time on the next video. Uh, it probably will be another Trailblazer video. So either way, because a Trailblazer 
CTSV videos coming soon here, as soon as uh, the damn recall comes kicks in. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. If you guys stop and by for the first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you like the content, if you don't, you don't. Oh well, I'll see you guys next time. Later.